And abortion access is the law of the land in Ohio. The push for abortion access in Ohio is passed by voters. What's next for issue one? After failing by a landslide eight years ago, voters today approve recreational marijuana in Ohio when it will become legal across our state. Columbus Mayor Andrew Genther gets a victory last night. We talked with him about plans for his third term. Good morning, everyone. It's 6 o'clock. This is Wake Up CBUS. We're glad you're here. I'm Tracy Townsend. I'm Clay Gordon. And I'm Angela Ann. We're going to get to traffic and weather in just a moment because temperatures will be really nice today. Mm -hmm. But let's start with our team coverage following this historic election in Ohio. Kevin Landers and Amy Steigerwald are joining us live with a look at what happens now following the passage of both Issue 1 and Issue 2. Let's we'll start with Issue 1 and a major win for abortion rights advocates. Ohioans approved a constitutional amendment that ensures access to abortion and other forms of reproductive health care. 10TV reporter Kevin Landers is live at the State House to explain why this abortion debate is not over despite this victory. Kevin. Yeah, absolutely right. Expect more legal challenges from pro-life supporters, including those here at the State House, who vowed last night to continue to fight against abortion. Issue 1 will go into effect in 30 days, ensuring abortion access in Ohio. But Republican leaders continue to go on the attack and plan to ask the Ohio Supreme Court to enforce a ban on doctors performing abortions after embryo cardiac activity, also known as the heartbeat law. Ohio House Speaker Jason Stevens said last night, quote, as a 100% pro-life conservative, I remain steadfastly committed to protecting life, and that commitment is unwavering. The legislature has multiple paths that we will explore to continue to protect innocent life. This is not the end of the conversation. Attentive political reporter Doug Petcash spoke to a political science professor about issue one moving forward. Lawmakers have no ability to uh, prohibit abortion access prior to viability under the language of this amendment. Only with another amendment, right? Yeah, they, they can uh, place some restrictions on abortion, but only if it's, uh, if it's in the interest of protecting the health uh, of the, the pregnant mother. Now here's a look at other challenges we could see with issue one, a ban on dilation and evacuation abortions, as well as Ohio's 24-hour waiting period after the patient's initial appointment. Now, issue one passed with, with a simple majority of 50% plus one. Ohio Republicans tried to increase that threshold to 60%, but that failed during the August special election. Reporting live from the State House, Kevin Landers, 10TV News. All right, Kevin, thank you. And the passage of issue one comes with mixed emotion for many people across the state. It felt like we were going to win. Ohioans have been telling us they wanted to enshrine abortion in our constitution. They needed to protect, we needed to stop the ban. So I'm overwhelmed and I'm excited and I, it feels right. This is what Ohioans have been saying. They finally got to speak for themselves. You look at issue one, uh, it's a radical proposal and whether you're pro-choice or pro-life, uh, it just goes much, much too far. Uh, it would enshrine in our Constitution uh, the right to have an abortion up until birth, so at any time during the pregnancy. The second thing it would do is, is really threaten a law that we've had on the books for many years that requires parental consent. President Biden weighed in on issue one on X, on an X, excuse me, formerly known as Twitter. He wrote and fired Americans once again voted to protect their fundamental freedoms and democracy won. In Ohio, voters protected access to reproductive health in their state's constitution. Well, recreational marijuana will soon become legal here in Ohio. Voters saying yes to issue two. Mm -hmm. So now the task begins on how to regulate it. And Amy Steigerwall picks up our post-election team coverage from the Ohio Department of Commerce. Good morning, Amy. Good morning. Yeah, while issue two has cleared uh, from Ohio voters, it will be a couple months before we see any legal uh, cannabis sellers here in Ohio. And that starts here at the Department of Commerce this morning. They will work with the newly created Division of Cannabis Control to figure out how to issue licenses across the state. That process is expected to take about nine months with the rulemaking process being completely done around roughly August of 2024. Now, just Despite voters clearing this issue, opponents have already started speaking out. Some lawmakers even hinting at wanting to try and overturn this with amendments to the law. This is a landslide victory, and I can't believe in 2023 we're actually talking about elected officials not respecting the will of the voters and not respecting the outcome of, 
at the outcome of an election. So I expect, I think that every single voter in Ohio has a right to expect that elected officials will implement and respect the will of voters. Now, once recreational marijuana begins uh, getting sold here in Ohio, there will be a 10% tax on those products. Now, with issue two passing, Ohio becomes the 24th state to legalize recreational marijuana. Live in downtown Columbus, <clears throat> Amy Stuggerwald for 10 TV News. All right, Amy, thank you. Let's take a look at the difference between this year's election results on issue two compared to 2015. That was issue three back in 2015. So here are the results from overnight with all the precincts reporting now. 57% of the entire state is in voting yes for this. It looks like a pretty big divide between populations, but let's break it down with our heat map county by county here. You can see the colors are a little bit different now. The stronger green is yes, but the lighters are, are more even here. But Biggest margin for this was Athens County, 69%. And then here in Franklin County, it was number two at 67%. On the flip side, the no's, the highest was in Putnam County with 69%. And then over here in Holmes County, that was in 2023, 31%. So, but let's take a look at 2015 results here too. Because basically here in Columbus, you can see the numbers basically flipped 67% to 63%. Yes, no, that's over 2020, 2015 on issue three. So fascinating how much has changed over the last eight years. Tracy? The Columbus City Schools $100 million annual levy passed. 10 TV News reporter Carly Dion has more on what this means for your taxes. Good morning. Columbus City School leaders say they are extremely grateful to the community for their support on this levy. Superintendent Dr. Angela Chapman says she's thankful the vote turned out in their favor. Now that the levy has passed, here's what this means for Columbus residents. It is a 7.7 .7 mil levy, meaning it will cost property owners about $270 per $100,000 of their appraised property value. It's estimated to generate nearly $100 million. The district says the money would be used for mental health resources, athletic stadiums, classroom upgrades, as well as playgrounds and cafeterias. Last night, Superintendent Chapman addressed just how close the vote was and what this means moving forward. That really speaks to the work that we need to do with our community, right? There are decisions that need to be made with our community. We need to make sure that our community feels as if they are in, well informed about what's going on in the district, what's working and what's not working, what are the areas of improvement. Columbus Board of Education President Jennifer Adair also spoke last night, and she ended her speech by saying the children of Columbus won. In downtown Columbus, Carly Dion, 10 TV News. All right, Carly, thank you. Now let's get to the race for mayor of Columbus. This morning, Mayor Andrew Ginther is thanking Columbus voters with this post that you see there. He will now begin a third term after winning in a landslide over his challenger, Joe Motil. Here's 10 TV's Richard Solomon with more on that. Richard, good morning. And good morning to you. Mayor Andrew Ginther says he is simply grateful for his reelection as the mayor of Columbus. But to welcome him to the stage for this special moment, was his daughter. The mayor has focused heavily on topics like crime and violence prevention and affordable housing. I spoke with the mayor one on one moments after he gave his victory speech. He says this is a pure example of the people of Columbus choosing the leader they want. He will enjoy tonight's moment, but he says this is a pro growth community. The mayor says he's dialing in on safety, housing and transit. Well, I think folks want to see us continue to focus on safety housing and transit. Uh, those are clearly the messages I got when I was out talking with folks going door to door and different events around the city and that's where we're going to put our focus. And the mayor says in the near future they plan to release another budget. He says the work on making Columbus the safest city in America does not stop. For now reporting in downtown Columbus, I'm 10 TV's Richard Solomon. Back to you. All right, Richard, thank you. You can always keep track of the results this morning. Just text the word results to 614-460-3345. You'll get a link sent straight to your phone or just follow right there at the bottom of your screen.